Good evening, and thank you to the members of the Maine Citizens Trade Policy Commission for holding this public hearing on the important matter of the proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. My name is Alex Jakimovich. I'm an electrical contractor and business owner from Booth Bay, and I'm a member of the Maine Fair Trade Campaign, but I'm also speaking today uh, as a representative of the steering committee of the Maine Small Business Coalition representing over 4,000 small businesses here in Maine. Also as a concerned citizen and taxpayer, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to offer our perspective on this issue as small business owners. The TPP is an enormous and expansive trade deal, the largest in U.S. history, and it deserves a full hearing. To examine its likely impacts globally, nationally, and in regard to Maine, we all have the right and the responsibility to ensure that it is well understood by all those who will be impacted by its implementation. Due to limitations on time, I will only be able to address a few of our most alarming concerns this evening. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, while being argued at the highest levels of government as an engine to further develop the strength of the American economy, by easing trade barriers and encouraging U.S. Ex exports, actually poses substantial threats to American jobs and wages. It also threatens national, state, and local economic and regulatory sovereignty over the environment, food safety, and public health. But more than just a giveaway of national and regional sovereignty rights, modern proposed trade deals like the Trans-Pacific Partnership represent significant takeovers and appropriations of economic decision-making, formerly the domain of national, state, and local governments. In essence, it really does transfer power to unaccountable extra-governmental corporate entities. The TPP is designed to deliberately remove many layers of democracy, public input, and scrutiny in decision-making. It is a net loss for democracy at every level. The TPP replaces democracy with private corporate power over many economic decisions with significant implications for nearly every aspect of American life, including intellectual property rights, labor and environmental protections, consumer safety and pro pro product labeling, government procurement, and national resource management. This binding pact, which encompasses as much as 40% of the world's economic activity, falls far short of establishing the high standards that the United States should require of a modern trade deal. Rather than having closed door discussions that narrowly focus on which industries may receive small advantages and disadvantages, policymakers should be asking deeper questions about whether the rules of the TPP on whole will create American jobs, enhance environmental sustainability, improve public health, <coughs> raise workers' wages, and advance human rights and democracy. After carefully considering all of the terms outlined in the TPP, the members of the Small Business Coalition, excuse me, the Maine Small Business Coalition, along with the Maine Fair Trade Campaign, and thousands of other businesses and workers groups across the country, believe that the answer to every one of those deeper questions is no. Our opposition to the TPP is broad and varied. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can only offer a short summary of the issues that we find most disturbing. But first, let's put things into context. As a result of globalization, there has been a consolidation of industries that has created great disruption of regional and local economies. Regional and local leaders used to provide localized economic development plans that met the needs of the local communities. 
Now, the needs of local communities are overlooked in favor of large-scale corporate benefit. This leaves those in small American communities to pay the price at the local level. Jobs are outsourced. Manufacturing goods purchased locally have been moved. In addition, locally made goods and services can't compete with the price of goods where production is subsidized and where economies of scale are making huge amounts of cheaply produced products for export. Economic globalization and free trade has had dire impacts on workers and local communities. In addition to literally relocating jobs to locations where profit comes at the expense of workers' wages, human rights, and the environment, free trade agreements in industrialized nations have strengthened the ability of employers to accept lower wages and benefits. To quote a recent Citizens Trade Campaign letter, the TPP is the latest opportunity to offshore more good paying American jobs, lower the wages in the jobs that are left, and increase income inequality by forcing U.S. employers into closer competition with the companies exploiting labor in countries like Vietnam, where workers legally paid less than 65 cents an hour, and Malaysia, where an estimated one-third of workers in the country's export-oriented electronics industry are victims of human trafficking. And the TPP's labor standards are so grossly inadequate to the task of protecting human rights abroad and jobs here at home. The countries involved in the TPP have labor and human rights records so egregious that the May 10th model, which I believe is from the Bush administration was never sufficient to tackle the systemic labor abuses in Colombia is simply incapable of ensuring that workers in Mexico, Vietnam, Malaysia, and all of the rest of the TPP countries will be able to exercise the rights they are promised on paper. Even if the labor standards were much stronger. The TPP is so poorly negotiated that it allows products assembled mainly from parts manufactured in third party countries with no TPP obligations whatsoever to enter the United States duty free. One of the more disturbing TPP requirements affecting small and local businesses includes Procurement waivers that eliminate buy American and buy local preferences that are currently found in many types of government purchasing contracts. Buy American policies require most federal government purchases of good to go to American firms. This in turn allows taxpayer dollars to be recycled back into our economy. Under TPP requirements, buy American would be effectively gutted as TPP rules require that foreign corporations receive nat national treatment in government procurement bids. This will allow foreign corporations to take over the local procurement markets and effectively export American jobs directly tied to federal procurement laws by offshoring our tax dollars. While previous trade agreements were aimed to open up new markets, primarily. A main intention of the TPP is to reduce or eliminate state and federal regulations that are viewed as trade irritants, which is likely to eliminate many small markets nationally and globally. To deal with barriers to trade, an expansive body of investor rights takes up most of the text of the TPP. The TPP sets up a system of independent extra-governmental secret tribunals known as the Investor State Dispute Settlement System, ISDS. We're going to hear a lot about that tonight, I would suspect. The system allows corporations the right to sue for losses from, quote, expected future profits, quote, such as when businesses' profits could be hurt by environmental or regulatory standards which rise above an accepted standard for all signatory nations, except as they pertain to investor rights. 
these private three-person corporate tribunals will be given greater rights and more power to arbitrate disagreements than even the Supreme Court of the United States. Now let's think about what that means. What that means for states like Maine and Vermont is that state labeling laws of all sorts, including GMO labeling and identifying products as being produced locally, may be vulnerable to litigation and thus struck down. Numerous health warnings and nutrition information labels are at risk of being viewed as barriers to trade and eliminated. There is also threat of litigation for an evolving environmental, health and safety standards that meet the needs of local people or from local procurement laws after a three-year window carve-out expires. If they are viewed as impeding corporate profit profitability, this will have a definite chilling effect on regulatory standards while also diminishing the regulatory sovereignty of local, state, and national governments since nations, states, and towns can be sued by foreign corporations for any losses to expected future profits that may result from any such excuse me, regulation. This takes away our control at the local level to determine the quality of life that we wish to promote in our communities and on behalf of our citizens. I'd like to end by pointing out that the aims of the TPP are contrary to the interests of small local businesses in Maine. The TPP will not strengthen our local economies. It will not result in workers seeing higher wages or allow environmental and safety standards to be strengthened. It will not allow greater access to locally produced goods and services. In fact, the opposite is true. We can and should look collectively at the big picture and realize that in adopting the provisions of the TPP, we are forcing main small businesses to compete with thousands of foreign corporations that do not have our labor laws, our health and safety standards, or our environmental regulations. We will be fa facing the proverbial race to the bottom to compete with those countries that maintain archaic standards that violate the rights of people and the environment on nearly every level. This isn't good for our communities, or our state or national governments. It certainly isn't good for our livelihoods. The TPP favors a handful of large multinational corporate entities and it destroys the checks and balances that allow smaller businesses to succeed. In order to protect American sovereignty and the integrity of the American workforce and ensure an equitable opportunity for all businesses to succeed, we strongly reject the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.